You've yeah. got to have some pull. You'd be like, I'd love to kill him, but like, how do you do that? Yeah, yeah. Right? It'd right. be pretty hard to pull that off. Well, someone pulled it off. So that tells you a lot about that, whoever that group of people was. Mm. They're no one to fuck with. That's crazy. What do you think? What's one of your favorite topics you've ever covered or something that you just got so obsessed with? Well, UFOs for sure. Yeah, let's talk some aliens. Because UFOs... Why UFOs and, and when? I'll tell you why. It's actually the same reason I was interested in Epstein. Because I'm like a completely conventional person. Like I worked at CNN. I spent a season doing commentary and analysis for Good Morning America. <laughs> I lived in Washington from the age of 15. My dad worked for the federal government. Like I am not an outsider. Like yeah. believing that fluoride is causing brain damage, whatever. Like, I've never believed in a conspiracy theory my entire life. I lived in Washington. And it was only in the past five years when all this evidence would, but I'm curious, all this evidence would emerge, and I'd be like, well, that doesn't, that's not true. It doesn't seem true to me. Like, I can, like, I don't know what the truth is, but I can tell when someone's lying. It's like my one gift. And I would see these people lying, and I'd be like, why are they lying? Like, I know they're lying, but why? And so I really came to this, like, at the age of 50. Like, that's, you're almost dead when you're 50. Like, that's very late. To well, come. What was it that made you? Well, UFOs. Like, I never for a second thought Uf UFOs. But what changed your attitude at 50? The evidence. Which is what? Well, we, we, oh, well, oh my gosh. Or, at this like point. The, well, at this point, it's kind of come out, actually. Uh -huh. um, the federal, the Pentagon was required by the last defense authorization bill to, like, produce some of their files on UFOs. And it turns out they have known about this since the end of the Second World War, which ended in 1945 been a huge increase during that war, during the war as well, huge increase in UFO sightings, in UFO crashes, et cetera, et cetera. And it turns out the federal government has been tracking this for 80 years and lying about it. So why? Well, that's a great question and I can't answer it. I have theories, but I don't know. But here's what I learned. Just to, the first question is, is this real? Or am I just being a crazy person who's spending too much time on the internet? Well, this summer, we got a call. We didn't reach out. This person called us. Lexi, who's standing right there, who's a genius, one of our producers, gets this call from this guy who's a tenured Stanford Medical School professor, and he wants to come on the show. Now, this guy has a couple patents, and so he's rich. And he's got tenure at one of the most prestigious schools in the world. So, like, he's not a flake. He comes on, and he's like, 11 years ago, the U.S. government reached out to me because I'm an expert on head injuries, on brain injuries, traumatic brain injuries, as a physician, and they had all these court cases from families of U.S. servicemen, over 100, who'd been killed by UFOs. And the Department of Defense was refusing to give them death benefits or medical benefits. And I'm like, and he's like, so they're in the courts. And I was like, there are over 100 servicemen killed by UFOs? Like, what? He's like, yeah, and there are court cases about it. I'm like, why isn't this on the front page of the New York Times? I don't know. But he goes, I'm involved in it. I'm the, you know, I'm one of the researchers. I'm the expert witness in these cases. Holy shit. What does that mean? And he's like, for example, uh, UFOs appear to be tra attracted for whatever reason to nuclear energy. So at nuclear missile bases in the upper Midwest, for example, nuclear powered aircraft carriers, nuclear powered submarines are all getting buzzed by these objects, including underwater. And in a number of cases, these things have landed on military bases, including famously in Germany, in West Germany in the 70s, and servicemen have approached them. Like, what is this thing? There's this, like, giant glowing thing on the base. And they approach, and they get traumatic brain injury. Like, they are rendered... Like, yeah, yeah. They get brain damage, or they're killed. And he studied their brains. And they have, this is all totally real. This is not, this is the Department of Defense, dude. And they've all had this damage from some kind of powerful energy that we cannot identify. So then this guy's like, wow, he's just a scientist. He never believed in UFOs. He's like, this is real. I cannot believe this is real. This is like crazy. So he starts to do research on it. He's still at Stanford. And it turns out that actually, yes, these things have been shot down and crashed. And the U.S. government has the wreckage. And it's being held by defense contractors, Raytheon, Lockheed which are big independent companies, but that work for the U.S. government, they're really part of the Department of Defense, but they're separate. So you can't, their sunshine laws don't apply to them. You can't actually get information from them. It's a very tricky way to hide information. And they have the wreckage from these crafts. Hmm. And I'm like, really? Are we positive these aren't like advanced Russian or Chinese? No, of course not. So is it more like the government or whatever is just this good at hiding it or people just don't care? 
Well, I think it's a combination of both. I think it's too big for people to metabolize. Like, if Prince Harry says something stupid, everyone's like, I can't believe Prince Harry. Because, like, that's manageable. You can, like, oh, this douchey fake prince with his stupid wife from Santa Monica. Like, I get that. But the idea that we're not alone in the universe and we're getting buzzed by these objects whose behavior defies physics, like, that just explodes too many categories in my head. I just can't deal with it. And I think that's part of it. But I'll tell you this, the most interesting from my perspective, I don't know if it's a consensus, but a lot of people, serious people, not crazy people who study this stuff, U.S. government employees, seem to believe that these objects are coming from under the oceans. So the conventional view is they're coming in from outer space. There's not actually a lot of that. You know, something enters the atmosphere, we can see it on satellite, and there's not any evidence of that, actually. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's happening, but we don't know that it is. There's a lot of evidence these things are coming out of the ocean, including videotape, of these objects coming out of the water at high speed or, even more amazing, descending at Mach 3 into the water. And then, of course, we have a huge submarine what fleet. The fuck? What the fuck? Then we have a huge submarine fleet, American, but also Chinese and Russian, uh, underwater with pretty sensitive measurement devices, sonar, etc., and they have recorded these objects doing hundreds of knots underwater. So like, let's just stop there. Wait, what's knots? Uh, it's 1.1 miles per hour. It's oh. a way that we measure objects in the water. Oh. It's 1.1 miles. It's a little more than mile, mile per hour. And a, and a mile is a measurement that we use in the United States. Right. It's distinct from a kilometer, still which I think is right. Yeah. Common in Canada. But anyway, <laughs> these things are moving at impossibly high speeds. So just like, let's just apply common sense for one second. If I take a 45 ACP, you know, a, a 45 caliber handgun and fire it at you underwater in, say, a swimming pool 50 feet away, you can catch the bullet because the resistance is so strong from the water that objects can't move that fast underwater. We know that. But they are, and they're moving without any visible means of propulsion. So no wake, no bubbles. Where, where have we, like, tracked that All over speed? the world. All over the world. Really? Yes. On, like, sonar systems? Yes, from the submarines. And this has come out. Wow. Like, some of this is in the New York Times. I'm not... That's crazy. It's not like you have to go on the dark web to find out. So, what, is there, like, aliens are living in the Earth's core or some shit? I have no idea. I'd only be speculating. But there, there, there is, I want to restate, videotape of these objects of unknown origin hitting the water and disappearing and then coming out of the water. And by the way, there was just last week... I spoke to a member of Congress about this who was on a military base in the state of Florida where they showed him images of four of these things that, like a a Raptor pilot, some American fighter pilot, took these images of these objects right next to his plane. But here's the most interesting thing. They they got a thermal read on him. You know, they measure heat. That's one of the ways that, you know, we get a heat imprint, like... If we have, a, like, a thermal optic, I can see the heat coming off your body. That's how we see things. At yeah. The thermal imaging of this showed the heat at the bottom of the object and not at the top. And as the commanding general said to this member of Congress, he's like, that doesn't make any sense because heat does what? It rises. So you don't ever see a thermal image of anything with the heat at the bottom. The heat's at the top. It's cool at the top, hot at the bottom? How does that work? If, you, if I put a cigarette lighter under my hand, where's the hot part? Yeah, yeah. Right? So he's like, as a f- matter of physics, that can't happen. So to me, one of the most intriguing questions about all of this is, does physics actually describe the world around us? And no, not all of it anyway. So like, what the fuck is that? Like, if all of a sudden I'm saying like the laws of physics, like gravity, photosynthesis, like not all of that is real. Like it has limits and there are things that exist outside of it. That's when your brain starts to explode. I just wonder what would happen if something does come out, more evidence does come out, how the people would respond to that. We'll ignore it. We'll ignore it. So my impression, I don't know this for a fact, but everyone I've ever talked to about it is like, one of the reasons they're nervous is that this shows, and the Russians and Chinese feel the same way, apparently. It shows that our military does not control our airspace, which is like a a basic precept of a country like this is our country we control our borders we control our airspace and our waters and we don't so that's really scary and it shows that the military is not in control so that's they don't want to admit that and the second thing they're worried about is some kind of like mass freak out where people are like i can't but aliens are here but 
based on my limited experience, I don't think they should worry because people are so high and so caught up in Prince Harry. <laughs> Do you want to finish it?